Hi, I'm Chance Barnett, co-founder of Jewel. And today we're gonna to be having a conversation about the future of digital asset custody in banking and lending uh, with uh, my guest, Nathan McCauley, the co-founder and CEO of Anchorage. Uh, Nathan's actually one of the best people in the world to be having this conversation with, um, with his vantage point and his, his experience uh, co-founding Anchorage. Um, I'll let you uh, hear more from Nathan specifically about Anchorage but I wanted to quickly set the stage for the conversation that we're going to have today. Um, first, we have uh, a digital asset market that is uh, experiencing tremendous growth. Uh, in digital currencies today, there's about 330 billion worth of digital currencies in market value. Um, and it's estimated over time uh, that uh, that's going to grow from 330 billion to an estimated 8 trillion in total digital assets that are going to be issued by 2027. Um, and that's going to bring us from a world where we are today, uh, where people are trading things like digital currencies such as Bitcoin, to a world where there's also other real world assets issued and stored in custody, uh, such as equities, real estate. Um, so tremendous growth. Custody underlies uh, a lot of that business and growth. And, and so it's, it, it's instrumental in the safety, security, and, and operation of the industry. Um, right now, new laws are helping drive digital assets from its primary usage today, which has been around digital currency trading and exchanging, uh, and is going to help drive it into broader, more mainstream hands of both institutional and retail holders of digital currencies. And that will even be enabled by banks more so in the future. So I'm really excited for you to uh, have this discussion with me with uh, Nathan. Um, uh, Nathan, thanks for joining us. Uh, Chance, it's great to be here. So uh, thanks for having me. Uh, uh, like Chance said, I'm uh, Nathan, co-founder and CEO of Anchorage. Anchorage is a digital asset custodian. Uh, we've been uh, in market for quite a few years now and uh, service uh, institutional investors and uh, institutional platforms uh, like Dual and have been uh, looking forward and really been uh, looking forward to growth in crypto and have been here as part of the as part of the growth in crypto. So very exciting to be having this conversation. Lots of uh, lots of themes going on this year that we're excited to share about. Fantastic. And uh, disclaimer here, uh, we really recently announced our partnership with Anchorage uh, for Jewel as a proposed bank in Bermuda that's in process of being licensed now to utilize Anchorage custody services. So I might be a little biased here, um, but for good reason, I think. Um, but I think that'll make for an even more interesting conversation. So my first question for you, Nathan, is uh, let's just talk more generally about the custody market and I'd love to hear just a tiny bit about your genesis story around Anchorage and where you see the custody market going. Yeah, it's a great question. So the, the custody market is uh, really developing and maturing uh, within crypto assets. You've got a, a, a number of very good players within the, the custody ecosystem, um, each with uh, particular strengths and uh, particular areas of, areas of focus. Uh, for Anchorage, we are really focused on uh, the fact that we think that uh, custody of digital assets is going to be about more than just storing them. Uh, custody of digital assets is going to be about being allowed to use them. Uh, the, some of the most interesting things going on in uh, digital assets have to do with the fact that in many ways, uh, digital assets are assets in a sense, but are also software. Uh, and what if your custodial layer allowed you to interact with it as if it's software, uh, so that you can um, do things within those networks, uh, whether it's um, uh, decentralized uh, networks, uh, whether it's e equities on a blockchain uh, where you may need to vote or process dividends, um, and then everything to having to do around trading and allowing fast movement of funds. All of these are big, uh, big focus areas uh, for Anchorage, all of which has um, been underlied by a, a deep, deep security model. Um, digital assets are in many ways bearer assets, and so the, the security model is incredibly important, and so we've spent a lot of time and care uh, to get that right uh, so that we have the, the right foundation upon which to build uh, the, the digital economy in many ways. Uh, uh, amazing, and I, I want to pull this back a few things, what you said, especially as this not just 
um, being assets, but software. Um, specifically to our topic today around digital asset custody in banking and lending, where do you see custody of digital assets um, really transforming aspects of the financial services landscape? And you know, feel free to touch on what you see in banking and lending. Sure. Yeah. So one of the one of the big things that we're seeing is that um, as the as the current market dynamics around, say, interest rates uh, are going uh, a bit lower in many parts of the world, um, we're seeing a, an interest in getting uh, yield on top of uh, on top of deposits. Uh, and one of the things that's very interesting there is that uh, we think one of the one of the growing trends is going to be looking at crypto as collateral for lending. Uh, so crypto assets like, like Bitcoin or like digital securities uh, being used as collateral against uh, lending. And there are uh, a, number of, a number of banks that are interested in this. And uh, we, as, we as Anchorage have built a, um, a platform that allows uh, banks to utilize our custody layer to hold that collateral. And so their clients uh, can come to Anchorage, hold the collateral uh, with us, and then take out take out a loan against it. Uh, so this one ends up being a, a very interesting use case. Uh, and then you take that a step further and say, well, maybe maybe people want to borrow and lend the crypto assets themselves. Maybe they want to borrow. Uh, maybe they want to borrow Bitcoin. Maybe they want to borrow other kinds of assets. Uh, and we think this is going to be a, a growing trend within the banking sector uh, to treat uh, blockchain enabled assets the same as you would have treated uh, either uh, fiat deposits or other kinds of um, assets that you might have on your balance sheet. So exciting area and something we're actually looking forward to uh, working with a, a number of parties on. Fantastic. Yeah. And just to touch on that, I, I'm really excited about that market and its growth uh, as you define crypto collateralized lending. And it's a core part of what we're looking at in the future at Jewel. Um, that market has grown from basically non-existent in a more formal institutional way two and a half years ago to about 4.6 billion in total loans today and growing, I, th I think it had about 50% growth over the last quarter. Um, so incredible growth. For people who aren't as familiar, um, just simplifying this, let's say someone's a significant holder of Bitcoin. Um, oftentimes they don't wanna sell that Bitcoin um, in, in order to put its value to use. So rather than sell it and have a taxable event, they might take a loan, say for US dollars or a stable coin against that and put that value to work um, and then repay the loan. Um, so this is something that exchanges are doing, but it's also something that individuals are doing. Could you talk a little bit about the difference in the market and your insights around both institutional uses of custody and where you see retail going and what's interesting there as well? Yeah, absolutely. So when we see uh, institutional and institutional use around custody, um, the, the market kind of uh, bifurcates into something that looks very similar to traditional markets where you have, um, in traditional markets, you might have your pensions or your endowments or other kinds of funds that are looking for very long time horizons just to hold assets and to hold those assets in a, in a safe uh, custodial environment. Um, and then on the flip side, in the traditional markets, you have, say, uh, hedge funds or high frequency traders that are looking to trade a lot and um, possibly trade on leverage and do a lot of, lot of different things that are uh, more fast paced. And so what's, what's interesting about the uh, crypto markets and the blockchain markets is that you have a similar bifurcation where you have very long holders. These typically end up being the venture capital funds that are investing in the underlying assets, investing in Bitcoin, investing in other um, new, new coins that are coming out. Uh, and we also have uh, crypto high frequency traders as well. Uh, and so what's interesting there from a custodian point of view is that uh, you have to be looking at solving both use cases. Can you solve the use case for someone who wants to buy Bitcoin and hold it for the next 20 or 30 years? Uh, maybe they have, they have that kind of a time horizon. Uh, and can you serve the, the people that are looking to do uh, a, lot of, a lot of fast trades, a lot of um, things going on very quickly? And so it's, it's very interesting how much it's mirroring traditional markets in a lot of ways. Interesting. Um, so as these markets grow, um, one of the things I think is 
really interesting alongside um, what can be done once significant amounts of digital assets are custodied within more traditional institutions like banks or non-bank financial institutions. Um, as you start to see that, you're working on some really interesting things to enable trading in a very safe way, uh, even from within custody so that funds don't have to be moved. Um, I, I, I think that's really interesting work. Is there anything you can share about that? I think that's on the kind of bleeding edge of where custody is moving today. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a great question, and um, what's what's a little bit interesting about the the crypto markets as compared to traditional markets is that um, many many trading venues within crypto markets are also effectively having to solve the custody layer. Uh, so you look at exchanges; they typically have integrated custody. You look at OTC desks; they typically have uh, integrated custody. And this is in pretty stark contrast to what you see in traditional markets where uh, custody of assets tends to be in a, um, a smaller set of highly trusted counterparties. Uh, and then settlement happens between those custodians rather than uh, settlement happening to every, every single counterparty that you might have traded with uh, in, the, in the market. Uh, and so with that, uh, it seems increasingly clear that the, the crypto markets are gonna move more in that direction where what, there will be a consolidation at the custody layer uh, and then integration with various trading venues, whether that be um, uh, the, the exchanges that we many people know and love within crypto uh, or whether that be with um, maybe some of the new and upcoming DeFi uh, exchanges. Uh, all of that is, all of that is on the table, and I think we're gonna we're gonna see a little bit of a difference in a change in the uh, in the market infrastructure, just as much as we're gonna see a change in the regulated institutions that are gonna be holding these assets. Uh, say say like banks, perhaps even uh, broker dealers, uh, as we as we continue to move forward. Absolutely, uh, great insights. One of the things uh, we're particularly excited about uh, and focused on in the future. Uh, at Jewel uh, from within Bermuda is actually helping some of the really important use cases around the need for uh, settlement or redemption. So, uh, you know, defining the case where let's say you hold a bunch of Bitcoin, but you want to sell a portion of that, um, that could potentially happen from within custody, but then even settle into a bank more quickly through use of say stable coins. Is that something you're excited about? Where do you see things happening in the, the custody industry around settlement? Yeah, settlement of um, settlement of funds is a very interesting uh, question. There's kind of multiple multiple angles on how it happens. The the thing that probably many people who aren't familiar with the uh, crypto industry will be surprised to hear is that a lot of settlement actually happens via stable coins. And so stable coins as a settlement technology are actually incredibly important because they, they allow um, the, what you might call the US dollar leg of a transaction to move and move around the ecosystem very similarly to the way that uh, crypto assets, decentralized crypto assets move around. Uh, and so stable coins as a mechanism for settlement uh, are in incredibly important and um, maybe a, a little bit counterintuitive until you really get into the markets and see how much you would like to be able to move a, uh, move a coin around in the same way as you're moving around the coin that's, that's being traded. And so there's a, there's a big opportunity around stable coins. Um, we, we support several of them. I think there's room for several more in the market. Uh, and so we're, we're looking at that as a trend that is, is gonna be, I think, really, really important. Nice. Well, we've, we've covered several of the, the, the key wonkier, both technical and business topics around um, custody and, and around banking and lending. Um, I, I want to turn to Bermuda for a little bit. So you're a US-based company. I think you have both uh, a trust company uh, in South Dakota, is that correct? Not to get yes. into all your underpinnings, yeah. but you're a qualified custodian. Uh, the US has come out with some uh, new announcements from federal bank regulators. Um, my quick take is, it's really great to see the US starting to catch up. There's new leadership at the federal bank regulator, the OCC, 
Meanwhile, Bermuda has a really great existing framework that was passed in 2018 and now being implemented through regulators. What's your perspective as largely a US-based company, but with an eye towards international uh, around Bermuda? Yeah, I think the, the, the highest level thing to think about here is that um, what, the, what the crypto industry fundamentally needs is regulation. Uh, for this to really take off in the way that we all want it to, uh, we need to have regulated solid institutions, ultimately that people can trust. So the, the whole thing that's underlying all of, um, all of the adoption of um, Bitcoin and other, other crypto assets is trust. And a, a big part of that is, is regulatory approval, regulatory understanding. And so when I when I look at places uh, like Bermuda, who are really leading leading the charge on helping uh, bring a, a stable and regulated environment, um, I'm incredibly grateful uh, because uh, there are there are places that are moving slower, there are places that are moving faster, um, and the the fact that uh, industry can partner with regulators in order to push things forward uh, is incredibly important for the uh, crypto industry at large, and it's uh, it's great to see it, so much progress in Bermuda. Yeah, I, I, I can speak to that from my own experience at Jewel in our process of uh, our, our bank license application. Um, it is an un, unusually positive environment uh, that's collaborative and regulators are really behind the legislative movement uh, to make a push for digital assets. And I, I think that doesn't exist in many other places, if at all. Uh, with the same kind of financial sophistication uh, and reputational backdrop. You know, there was other jurisdictions that I think made a big play to become this international hub for digital assets, namely Malta. Um, but I think it had its own set of challenges uh, that Bermuda is not really saddled with. So I think there's a lot of really exciting, interesting advantages uh, to Bermuda based on what you said and helping create a longer term environment of trust. and. I've seen that plague this industry a bit. I mean, I think recent DeFi challenges, uh, the hack of KuCoin, these aren't necessarily regulatory problems, but they erode trust when we start to look at putting these in front of people who aren't speculating on them, but want to invest, say, 1% of their life savings in them, which is a very different um, approach. Um, you're at the heart of that really uh, with custody. Um, can you explain a little bit about your unique approach to custody? Uh, this is where you get to do a little bit of the commercial, but I'm, I'm a sure. big fan of your, your product. So tell us a little bit more about your unique, unique approach to security and custody. Yes. So our, the, the biggest thing about our approach is, you know, drafting on that notion of trust. Uh, we, want to be we want to be really focused on being safe. We are a safe place to hold your assets. And a lot of being safe means that uh, the clients or the counterparties that work with us can't make mistakes. Uh, and so our, our system is built to be uh, redundant in terms of security checks, but also very, very flexible and easy to use. Uh, and so we focus on, um, in terms of key storage, keeping all of our, all of our keys, all the crypto assets in, uh, dedicated offline devices that are uh, incredibly secure and, and stored very securely, uh, but then mediating any access to those devices with a comprehensive set of biometric and behavioral authentication uh, approaches. And so anybody integrating with our system, anybody using our system uh, needs to go through a, a comprehensive biometric check in order to be able to move any of their funds. And we think this provides a, a very, very flexible and easy to use system that at the same time uh, achieves security that is unmatched anywhere else within the within the ecosystem. Great, thanks for sharing. Um, well, if someone wants to learn more about Anchorage, um, where should they go? Sure, all the all the information about Anchorage is available at our website, Anchorage.com, and we're we're uh, onboarding new clients every day. So if people are interested in in bringing on their assets, uh, we would love to help them. Great. And uh, similarly here, we're excited uh, to get to the place where we can announce and launch formally uh, Jewel as a bank. We're in, in process now, uh, but we'll be leveraging uh, Anchorage, Anchorage Custody for our clients. And uh, 
So I, I hope you enjoyed this conversation uh, today with Nathan and I. Uh, as you can tell, we're very uh, bullish about the future of digital assets and, and taking our own approach. Um, thanks for joining the conversation, Nathan. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was a, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. I know. Yeah.